Hello. Hello, everybody. You are tuning in to Zared's Record. I am your host, Zared. So today, I am going to continue on the topic that I referred to on the last episode. Uh, if you didn't watch that, it's called um, The Last of the Gamer Tongue. Um, I suggest you uh, you go watch that. Um, it's gonna kind of it's gonna kind of be the the death of 100% being pol- like on the 100 political commentator side, and it's gonna be more about what I talked about and actually um, in episode three called the Entertainment Industry's Agenda, which I suggest you watch that because that is kind of it's kind of a a preface slash it's gonna it's kind of a a pre not a prerequisite but it's a it's a it's something that you have to watch that gives you an idea of what I'm going to talk about today. But if you don't want to watch it, then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of flesh out the details in that episode, in today's episode, but with uh, more along the lines of the music entertainment industry. Because as I hope you guys know, and I hope you guys check out my music, I work in the music industry, but not, you know, let me, you know, I'm not like working with UMG or anything because I don't have any of the, the, playability or just uh any of the notoriety slash popularity to actually do any of that but um today before i get into the topic though um you can see that i'm dripped out i'm swagged out you can see that Mm, hold on you want to see that hold on Mm. now I know what you may be thinking. If you've been listening to this show, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, why is he dressed like that? This is kind of a, that kind of go against what he's talking about, especially this hat right here. And to that, I say yes. And um, for those of you who are only listening to this episode, what I'm wearing is I got a denim jacket. It's a black pyramid denim jacket. It's got a lot of these black pyramid signs from the, from the brand. Uh, that's all over it. There's patches all on the arms. There's a patch of, of a red and white pyramid type logo. It's got pyramid on the other on the other arm, on the forearm. And uh, I'm wearing a hat that has a. Let me get closer there so you can see. Whoever, for those of you who are watching it, you can see the. It's got a you know a very devilistic. Satanist looking goat on it and that's because it's supposed to be like that it's supposed to look like um Barthol or whatever they call him I don't exactly know exactly what all the uh it's a brown hat with a picture of a goat that has horns on it and um if you know if you watch the show if you know if you know me then you know that that's not something that I support at all and I'm wearing these these blue Travis Scott suede shoes I'm swagged out so before I actually talk about the reasons why I'm I am dressed this way also the shirt is a is a Chris Brown Indigo Tour 2019 with the the eye in the middle of the head with chakras and all these alignment things all these colors um go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash XAROD records or records, whichever one. Uh, if you're listening to this, of course. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you look at the description of the video and you can see all my social medias. You can see where you can get this podcast in uh, audio form. And also has a link to my most recent single that I highly suggest you guys listen to because I'm very proud of that song. And I definitely want, I want support. Because I cannot do this without the support of people who want to listen to it, of course. And I cannot make a change. I cannot be part of a movement that wants to make change in the music industry that is pretty much making blood packs with, uh, with the devil, obviously. So please support if you can. You know, supporting is free, of course. You can always share it. So with this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, make sure that in the comments you call me a racist. Like I always say, make sure you call me um, a traitor to my to my ethnicity. I would appreciate that as well. And if you are listening to this on Apple, Spotify, or whatever you get your podcast, then 
read the description of the uh, of the podcast. So the podcast information has links to all my social medias as well as my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Zared Records, and it has also a link to my to my music that I want you guys to listen to because again, I cannot do this without y'all. And I cannot make a change and I cannot be part of the movement if I don't have support. Which is, I mean, again, if it was for the money, I wouldn't be doing music. I'd be um, a construction worker. Like, I was... <laughs> but, um... All right. Now, with the self-promotion out the way. The topic that I am talking about today is symbolism. And a lot of people take this take this for granted they think that you know symbols are just symbols like calm down like they're just pictures you know they're just art but then you know if it's art then why is art you know art is an expression of the self and uh symbolism is very important this is why we gather we gather around the american flag or we you know we don't as much anymore at all but this is why we did this is why christians you know have the cross because it symbolizes jesus on the cross and he died on the cross Everyone has, this is why the Freemasons, they, I'm not going to do the sign, but uh, the Freemasons do the uh, hand gesture sign and they do all types of signs. And uh, this is why the jacket that I'm wearing, Black Pyramid, is, um, especially this one on the back, if, you, if, you, if you're if you listening to this, um, on the back of this denim jacket, there is a pyramid in black with the white um, little cuts in it to separate the little bricks. And it's in the middle of the uh, in the middle of um, the mountain range or something like that, and uh, this is the kind of stuff that you would see on the back of the. Uh, well, you see this in the Freemasonry symbols at all. They even make the gesture with their hands of, of a pyramid. This is stuff that you see on like the back of your of a dollar bill, where it has the the all seeing eye and the the pyramid on it. You can just pull up a dollar bill, turn it around, and you can see the pyramid. It pretty much looks like that. And the shirt that I'm wearing has the eye in the middle. It's like the all-seeing eye. And I actually have another jacket with the whole middle of the jacket. It's just a giant eye. I mean, I bought these things as before I was a Christian. And even though they're swaggy, I mean, that's kind of the appeal. I mean, the most tempting things, the most appealing things to you are typically stuff that you are not supposed to partake in. And and, uh, that's the reason why the devil is so... um, alluring this is why he's so tempting is because the devil always disguises himself in the most um attractive way possible happens all the time and uh so today let me go through a few examples that i've been uh, i've been thinking about recently all right symbolism is incredibly important which is why conservatives are uh so fist waving at taking the america flag you damn get off Get off the flag, get off my lawn, get off this, get off that. That's why the reason why they're like, don't change this and don't hang up gay flags all over the all over the school. And it's because we care. Conservatives, you know, as like I, I talked about in the last episode, conservatives by definition are fine with the way that they live. They're fine with traditions. Every human throughout human humankind with humanity has always been okay with the with the Traditions. We all have traditions. So, at the same time, the people who are hanging up the gay flag are saying, well, you know what? Why do you guys care? Why do you guys care? What? what, what we're just putting up this flag. We're just throwing up these symbols. We're just throwing up gang signs and all of this. Is Why do you care? I was like, well, you care. You obviously care, so I should care, right? <laughs> I was like, you care. So, I mean, yeah, I care because you're changing something that nobody had a problem with except for you because by definition, you are not okay with the way you live. So with that said, um, let me go through the entertainment industry because the entertainment industry and the music industry are known, even if people don't actually realize it, they have some crazy symbols, they have some crazy symbolism, they have the craziest music videos, they have the craziest everything that you that you can think of. That's why the craziest lyrics. So let me go through um, a few examples here. All right, I got them pulled up on my phone here, but I'll put them up on the screen and I'll describe them for you who are listening. Um, this is the music industry, all right. You guys know Travis Scott, right? Making sure it's recording, my bad. Um, you, you know the whole, you remember the whole Travis Scott Astro World um, controversy slash tragedy because people actually died in, um, 
in the festival. They died in the festival. They died in the crowd. They got stomped on. I was saying, stop, stop. And they just stomped on, jumped on. That's just like, <laughs> that's actually definitely, <laughs> that's the literal term of being jumped. They got jumped. Oh, that's crazy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. But uh, anyway, the Travis Scott Astroworld, <laughs> uh, it was the three people died in the, uh, in the, in the stampede slash they got jumped on. So let me go through. So Travis Scott Astroworld, let's go, let's go through the stage setup, all right? The stage setup has, uh, is a picture, it's not a picture, it's a, it's a, I guess a formation of a mountain. And in the middle of the mountain, there's this portal, right? It looks like a portal type slash tunnel. And in the middle, it says, see you on the other side. Hmm. Maybe maybe it's just a little crazy, you know, it's, you know, just, just a little crazy. I mean, well, I mean, it's just a coincidence, right? I mean, the, he made an album called Birds in the Trap where he has devil wings on and he's doing all types of, you know. And it, come on, man. It's just a coincidence. All right, let's go through another one. Let's go through a... Uh, also in the picture of the mountain in the in the tunnel with the portal thing, it's to see you on the other side. It's red and black and orange, pretty much just the anything that you would associate with burning in hell. That's that's what uh, is exactly going on there. All right. So maybe it's just a coincidence, right? It's just a coincidence, like you know why why why? Uh, it's just it's just a symbol, man. It's just a symbol. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go through another symbol. All right. This one is the uh, Travis Scott. Poster for Astro World of uh, 2021. All right, let's see. Astro World 2021. It's a flyer, and in the middle of the flyer, I'm gonna pull up on screen here so you guys can see it. Uh, it says, "Open your eyes to a whole new universe," and it has a has two hands in the middle in the center. And the, the palms of their hands have eyes in them. Open palms with eyes looking directly at you. And on the, on the I guess, on the top of the right hand. And, um, but then on the flyer, it's on the, it's on the left. On the left side of the flyer. There is a, um, there are five figures walking portraying to be to you know to walk and then um two of them are on one side of a of a square slash i'm guessing that's supposed to be like a portal and the other two are going into a portal with uh they're walking out with smooth with smooth heads with smooth haircuts and coming out with mohawks and crazy haircuts and they, again it pictures a symbolism of a tunnel of a road going into a tunnel and uh on the right side of the poster, it says, see you on the other side. Hmm. That's crazy, right? Like, wow. Who would have known? Who would have known? Okay, no, okay. Maybe, maybe, again, maybe I'm just talking real crazy, right? Maybe I'm just some sort of guy who's the crazy guy who was off the meth, all right? I'm not off the meth, all right? All right, I'm not, I'm not off the meth. You know, conservatives were known to be crayon eaters. And so I would love to continue to be that, all right? That's me. As I volunteer. All right, all right. Let's go to another flyer, all right? Travis Scott, Astro Festival 2021, November 5th. Again, it has a weird portal dimension type of graph in the middle of this one. And in big, bolded, highlighted letters, it says, see you on the other side. And in the middle of this portal, there are eyes looking... Looking at you, there is a port. The portal is framed with eyes looking at you. Now, come on. If symbolism doesn't really mean anything, then why was the point of a? Uh, what was the point of him putting all types of symbols into the uh, into the ad into the poster? Well, of course he has to do that. Well, one, it has your attention. I'll grant you that. But why does it grant your attention? Because it looks crazy. Or because it looks in enticing in a way. But isn't it so weird how see you on the other side and it goes to a portal. 
and every single one of these had there's, there's eyes you know it's supposed to be the whole eyes thing you know the all-seeing eye that's that's the point of that and in the middle there's a portal and on the, around the portal it says see you on the other side and it just so happens that, that at that same festival, there were five people that died. And, you know, Travis Scott got canceled for a little bit. He's coming back. But Travis Scott got canceled for a while because of his response or his the lack of his response to the actual tragedy. You know, there was that video, famously, that uh, of um, a fan screaming at, uh, at Travis Scott saying, he needs help. This guy's dying. You know, he's getting stomped on. Travis, stop. Stop the stop the uh, stop the concert. Are you? That's a real thing. That was a real thing. I don't. Um, I don't know if I should pull that up. Nah, I'm not gonna pull that. Up. I, I kind of don't feel like editing it and <laughs> post. But uh, actually, yeah. You know what? Let's go ahead and pull it up. Now, isn't that just something? All right, so let's go on. You know, I mean, maybe I'm just jumping to conclusions. All right, okay, okay. Let's go to another um, music giant, music industry mogul slash success story. All right, let's go to Jay Z. Everyone knows Jay Z for doing the whole pyramid hand sign. Everyone knows he does that. Why does he do that? Well, he has, he's got to pander, of course, to the people that probably pay him and that allow him to be at the level that he's at. So, all right, Jay-Z. Let's pull up this picture of Jay-Z right here. Boom. Look at that. Jay-Z made sure to go out of his way to, to look towards the camera, orient himself to the camera, and make the, the hand gesture right there. What is that? It's a pyramid? It's a, oh, it's the Freemason sign. All right. All right, all right, all right. I don't have to pull up many pictures because if you look up Jay Z pictures on Google, um, literally he's just gonna be doing that. So I, I don't have to pull up seventeen thousand of those. Um, and then most recently, uh, there was a performance that he did at the Grammys. Speaking of the Grammys, speaking of the devil, um, where at the Grammys he decided to—I don't know if he decided, but I'm pretty sure he had a part in being like, "Yeah, you know what? Let's do that." Where the stage set up for the Grammys was all 12 apostles um, consisting of, I don't know who, I don't know who, let me check. I can't really see who this is. It's got DJ Drama, it's got DJ Khaled, Rick Ross, Jay-Z at the center of the table. And there's 12 people there, right? 12 people around Jay-Z, six on this side, six on, uh, six on the other side. And, uh... It's supposed to symbolize the, you know, Jesus and his disciples, the last, the last supper, the last feast, um, and the, you know, the and it's crazy because it'd be one thing if it was just him, you know, just having the the stage set up in that in such a way that it portrays that, which is already blasphemous. But even more so, they're performing, or he's performing a song that is on DJ Khaled's most recent album, um, that was a piece of garbage. It's called God Did. And the whole, th I, I, first, I mean, I didn't listen to that song because I thought it was going to be corny. I don't really rock with Jay-Z like that. And, um, but, and also I kind of figured since Jay-Z was on it, it was going to be blasphemous. So I didn't want to waste my time. Um, if you guys want reviews of albums, I would love to do that as well. So that way I can, um, lean more and more into music, music stuff. That's what I realized that I should be doing. That's what my purpose is. But, um. Jay-Z performed the song God Did. And there's a line in there somewhere. I don't remember exactly. I only listened to it about once or twice. No, I only, not, I didn't, I didn't listen, I only listened to like half of the song. I didn't waste my time. But Jay-Z, they did a song called God Did. And um, I remember seeing a video from The Truth Is where he pointed out that in the, uh, in, the, in the song, he was saying God did 
create something, but Hove, but Hove created this for himself or something along the lines of that, where he's, he's pretty much just saying Hove did. You know, the song's called God Did, but, you know, Hove did. Hove did. <laughs> and uh, this, so it's like even more blasphemous. It's not only are you portraying yourself to be Jesus in, in that picture that everyone knows of, of the Last Supper, but on top of that, you are performing a song called God Did. Yeah. I mean, you, I got, you got to go out of your way to do that. That's, that's just so... I don't, I'm not irritated. It's just so blatant and it's so corny. But I guess that's what you expect from Jay-Z. Um, you know, this was the same Grammys that had um, Sam's, Sam Smith's um, Unholy, <laughs> you know, aptly named, very properly named, called Unholy, the song, where he was saying how... Um, you know, he's pretty much just uh, sucking this dude off behind this woman's back. <laughs> and he's also dressed as the devil. You know, he's fat. He's ugly. He's in a onesie with a with devil horn hat or something, which is corny in itself. So it's uh, it's not so crazy. And again, it was sponsored by Pfizer. Um, don't let that distract you. It was sponsored by Pfizer. Um, <laughs> very, very suiting. Sam Smith performs unholy. There's fire everywhere. It's dark. It's red. He's got devil horn rats. And then at the end, sponsored by Pfizer. Very, very, very fitting. Love that. All right, now let's take let's take a look at somebody else, right? Okay, that's just what that's just three people that are that are uh, that are really big artists, and they just so happen to be showing all of this weird symbolism, all these weird pictures, and all that. Okay, 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 maybe, maybe. Let's take a look at this. I, I recently, I didn't listen to this album. Um, I really like this artist, but um, I, I did not, I haven't been listening to much hip hop. I listen to R&B and then I've been getting more and more into gospel because I realized I should be doing that. <laughs> it's probably the best for me. And um, also because the, the voices on those gospel singers, oof, you just know that they were anointed that gift to do God's work, to spread his love an emotion like, that's just oof. anyway but uh the artist called freddie gibbs he has his album called soul sold separately uh that's the album title and <laughs> each s in that in soul sold separately is, is a dollar sign now i didn't listen to the album but i'm not gonna say he didn't sell his soul or, or he didn't write a blood pact because the soul isn't yours to sell but you do, you have the capability of writing blood packs on your soul. And then in the picture of the, uh, of the album, I'll pull it up right now. Yeah, it's, it's a picture of uh, money, gambling, poker chips, jackpot, and um, cards everywhere. So, uh, yeah, it's very fitting for Soul Sold Separately. I would not put it past him. I don't know. I don't know Freddie Gibbs personally. Um, but considering that he's signed with a lot of the big labels, it means he probably did some things that he will regret later on in life. All right, now let's take something. Let's take, all right, and that was that four. Um, let me see if I get to five, three, six mafia. There you go. Think about the name. It never really occurred to me um, ever, actually, to actually look at the name of that. Because I just thought, Lolly, 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 won't you let me buy that money, mommy, lolly, red hot, red hot, hot. It never occurred to me. I was just enjoying the song. But also, I was, what, like nine years old? So, like, it didn't, <laughs> the, the concepts and ideas of looking further into things were not really anything. Man, it, didn't, it didn't occur to me at all. But the name 36 Mafia, like 666 Mafia. Wow, that is so blatant that I didn't realize. Wow. Three six mafia. What is that? We up to five. Ooh, I got the five. I got the five. All right. And I talked about this in episode three. I talked about Rihanna and how she has those crazy symbols and all this blood everywhere and doing all types of weird, crazy, um, kill your manager stuff. But I did forget to quote um, the lyrics in Umbrella, and I did have it written in the notes to do that. But I'm gonna state it here because I forgot to do it then. All right. 
So. Umbrella, Anna, Anna, A, A. You guys know that song. But did you have you ever actually looked at the lyrics? Be a friend, I'ma took the oath. Was it? Be a friend, took the oath, I'ma stick it out to the end. She took the oath and she's gonna stick it out to the end. And who did she sign to? Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Yeah. Wow, it's funny how that all ties in, right? Yes, sir, ski. Yes, sir, ski. Wow. <laughs> but it's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. How do you go along? First of all, um, you go from being a teenage singer to in the in the Barbados or whatever she wherever she's from. In the islands somewhere and then some random american old guy comes around and finds you a talent and just all of a sudden is like yeah that's it uh you're 14 years old i like that let me go ahead and uh pay you money and uh we'll see what happens like that's not that's a little shady and then what happens the first thing she does sign with jay-z Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. She took the oath. She gonna stick it out to the end. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just saying something. We're up to six. Ooh, very fitting. All right, let's pull up another one. I know I'm looking at my phone for those weeks because I didn't. I don't. My uh, my printer doesn't actually work. I don't have any um, ink in it. Really, is what I should say. But um, let's go ahead and just uh, do something else. Let's let's point out another one. All right. Everyone's favorite, as of recently anyway, everyone's favorite artist, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny? I, n I was never a fan of Bad Bunny. Um, I never listened to him ever. Most, uh, a lot of it has to do, I didn't understand it. And a lot of it also has to, but most of it had to do with that I don't care about modern music in terms of uh, the pop artists and stuff like that because I just think it's utter garbage. And when you got WAP going to number one on the on the charts, you just know that you're, you're, uh, you're probably not putting out the greatest material. Um, Bad Bunny, all right. I don't know exactly where this was at. I'm gonna pull up the picture on screen here. I'm gonna describe it for you, those are listening. So Bad Bunny, there is a picture of him in a in a all red dress surrounded by an all red set um he has there's a black door behind him with two red x's and there are red stairs he's got on red <laughs> thigh high latex boots on he's got a latex leather red i don't know dress on with red leather gloves he has on earrings and he's he has on um, lipstick makeup is pretty much a whole face makeup on right now and uh yeah i didn't know he was a gay boy but i guess he's a gay boy and in the next picture which boom 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 there it's a it's a it's a video there well i'm not gonna pull the video up because i don't want to uh i mean if you want to watch it go ahead but i suggest that you guys make sure that you pray before you watch it it's a picture of him in the center in the in the center of a pool he's, he's chained up by uh six different people and they all have horns on they all have these these horn antlers like the ones on the hat you see how that kind of integrates here and uh he is chained up by these six people who are holding him captive and he's got his shirt off he's got a kilt on he's got a spike uh choker on look at that you know, it's really funny how at, at a certain point, when you when you get to a certain height, you got to be gay, <laughs> which tells you that the gay that the gay community is not is not under persecution because if gay people were under persecution, then the highest, and the most paid people, I mean, I, I mean, they're they're pretty rich. The richest people would not want to be gay. They would not support gay anything if they if they really. If gay people were really under persecution and trans people were really under persecution, 
then the people who are the richest would never support that because they know that that's such a liability to them. A lot of people wouldn't want to be gay because they understand that it's not something that they, I'm not saying that they should persecute gay people, okay? What I'm saying is that's how you know that the, the whole narrative of all this faking gay stuff is always at not plausible, but it's always under persecution. It's just false because the, the biggest industries in the world are pushing it. I don't know if Bad Bunny was gay beforehand. I mean, they, they just made him more gay. But good job. Good on them. Good on them. <laughs> and uh, let's go on to another one. Now, if you ever look at the big artists... Um, Shout out to The Truth Is, by the way. Um, the Truth Is, um, the channel on YouTube, I'm going to give a shout out to them because he does he does some really good work and um, he points out a lot of the Freemasonry in uh, the music industry. And he actually brought this point up that I saw and it's um, how all the big artists, they all have a picture with them covering their eye like this or no, they're covering up their their left eye. And they're always just pointing out the right one. That's part, it's like a Freemason symbol. If you actually look up at, um, what is it? Wesley Crowley and Wesley, was it? Aleister Crowley, the uh, the father of rocks, of um, the Freemasonry and rock, which is what rock is founded on. That they, he um, he does that sign. He's got the, the pyramid on, like the one that's on the back here. And he, that's how you, that's how you show your, your, um, that you that you are one of them, is they all have this picture, and I'm doing it right now. I'm covering up my my uh, my left eye. They always do that, and so that's another symbol that you could tell. That's another symbol that is important to them to show that they are they are with them, and they are not out. So let's do another one. All right, one of the biggest artists of the world. Speaking of the big artists, The Weeknd, probably the most streamed artist of all time, or I mean the the modern age in the world currently that are like the past two years especially All right the weekend now he had he had an album called starboard he has an album called starboard i i actually really liked that album but again it was before i understood um general just concepts <laughs> in, in other words when i was uh 17 i didn't understand concepts that you know, there's there's multiple levels to something before something actually happens, or just multiple levels to concepts before a concept is actually revealed, or a concept is fully fleshed out. Like I didn't understand that, and because I, I didn't really have to, there was no accountability towards myself as a human being, because I didn't have the necessary, I guess, faculties to really reason things out. Because I wasn't growing up in the real world; I was growing up in a government school that taught me not to do that, pretty much. They didn't overtly do it, but they did do it in a way because they didn't build up the habit of us thinking things out. So the weekend and his Starboy music videos, um, and in his biggest song, Starboy, I'm a my Starboy. Look what you done. He has a uh, in the in the video. He's he's carrying around a cross that's lit up like an LED LED pink, and um. He's over there smashing everything in his apartment. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that Weekend does where it's, it's a lot of symbolism. In the, um, the, his song, Tell Your Friends, he, he, kills, he kills the older version of himself, buries him, and then he comes out a new one. He even In that video, he even makes an oath with somebody who is the devil. He signs the oath with them, and he comes back, and he, he burns. But in the, and so that just tells you that they all that those people who are who are the most Satanists and the most atheists, they believe in God, whether or not they want to just say they do or they don't. But the fact that they spend so much time trying to disprove that God exists, they prove that God does exist because of how adamant they are on proving it, and the fact that they can never get proof that He does not exist. That proves that God does exist because they have no proof, and they spent uh, they spend so much time. It's just, but if you, if there was no if there was nothing, and I talk about this every single time, but if there was nothing that tells you that something is wrong and something is right, then how do you know 
If there was no power that was telling you that something is right and something was wrong, then how do you know if something is wrong? <laughs> if you believe that there is no God and that even then that God isn't, doesn't exist, well, how do you know that God doesn't exist? You have, a, you have rationality that gives you that, but where did that rationality come from? Anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, in this video, um, what is it? The secrets that you keep when you're talking in your sleep. Uh, in the beginning of the video, there's a video of him looking up into the clouds. And there's a giant stone cross that he's looking up towards. Or is that the end of the video? I don't remember. It's in the video, though. It's a, it's a picture of him looking straight up into the skies. And there's a giant cross that he's looking at. And in that same album, there's a, he has a song called Ordinary Life, right? I realize that I'm not looking into the camera too much, and I apologize for that. Um, I need to get more professional about that. I'm too, I have my notes here again. Like I said, I realize I got to do it. But I did have pictures up, so I'll, I'll fix that. I'll fix that next time. Um, in this song, Ordinary Life. All right, now I'm looking at you. Heaven knows that I've been sold, paid for the life that I chose. If I could, I'd trade it all for a halo. And she said she'll pray for me. I said it's too late for me. It's no ordinary life. It's no ordinary life. So even in the lyrics of Ordinary Life, sorry, um, it's a little cold out here. But um, he even says it in here. Heaven knows that I've been told, paid for the life that I chose. So he's already telling you that he's he's paying for turning his back against heaven. Um, and he regrets it. He says, if I could trade it, I'd trade it all. Trade it for a halo. So he's admitting that he's, he's no angel at all. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm the most perfect human being at all. But here and there, he's, he's admitting, like, he's paying for the life that he chose. He chose that life that he regrets and that he wishes now that he could get his soul back look and then the next line and she said that she'll pray for me i said it's too late for me it's too late for him to go back he's already he already made a pact he already made a blood pact that this is the life and it's the life he chose now he can't he can't get his soul back until it's over it's not obviously i mean again it's it's it, you could say where it, oh it's art it's art but again art lives in reality of course and art is a reflection of that reality art is a reflection of what the human can think of and yes art is art is objective there is bad art and there is good art um wop people like to say music is art um people and you would i would have to tell you do you think wop is is art i i would say it's art but that doesn't mean it's good you mean that it means it's complete utter garbage <laughs> this is why people go out of their way to go across countries to go visit historical sites that were one that were the reason why they're beautiful because they believe in christianity uh the renaissance era okay whatever we talk about that a whole lot now let's get i keep keep giving you example after example example how many i gotta give you how many i gotta give you all right let me do one more all right let me do one more before and let me get one more. All right, Uzi, little little snoozy. I call him snoozy, um, not because uh, I, I don't know. At first, I call him snoozy because I thought the bro was boring, and eventually, yeah, I I got the I got the appeal. All right, all right, let's go let's go with snoozy. Let me pull up this picture right here. All right, Uzi is wearing a picture. I mean, I'm not wearing a picture. Uzi in this picture is wearing a um. Is wearing a, I guess a tennis, a tennis bracket, tennis stone, whatever. I don't know what you'd call it. He's got a, a diamond chain on, with a, a bunch of with, what five five upside down crosses around his neck. Why would he do that? If that if it's just a symbol, then you know. If, okay, if the symbol didn't have meaning, then why would he not just get a diamond chain? Like, why'd he go out of his way to to make sure that it was the upside down crosses? 
Like, he didn't have to do that, but he chose to do it. And let's pull up this next one, all right? Because it's the same thing. He didn't have to do this, but he wanted to. He chose to do this. Or maybe he didn't choose, but he agreed with it. Or he, maybe he didn't agree with it because, again, he said it's too late for me. It's an ordinary lie. All right. On this picture right here, it's a picture of little Snoozy Vert and, um, and Nav. It's at a show, right? He's he's at a, he's performing on a stage and on the stage there is fire on the LED screens and there are upside down there are upside down crosses here that he is standing in between performing with fire as on the LED screens in these on these upside down crosses. Wow! Again, he didn't have to do that, or maybe he did have to do it because that's the oath that he took. But again. Even if he wasn't in in full charge of what, it, or I guess in full, com if he wasn't in charge with his stage setup and all the things that he's buying or given or done, then someone is obviously doing that for him. Because even if he didn't put up those upside down crosses or he didn't request it, then someone else did. So why would they do that? They they chose to do that. Why would what? If it was just a symbol, they didn't have to do that. They could have just had a, an LED screen. No, they do it blatantly because they understand that symbolism is important. That symbols mean symbols mean something. So, if so, and anyone who believes, even anyone who does actually take that stance, they don't believe that. They're just saying something they don't believe. And that brings me to another topic of people just not believing what it is that they say. Or maybe, and again, now that I'm talking about it and I'm actually discussing it in this episode, maybe it's, be, maybe it's because of the oath that they took that they have to comply with, with all of this woke garbage, all of this racist garbage in this modern uh, polarized landscape of, of politics. And not just like politician like Trump and Biden kind of stuff, but more along the lines of good and bad <laughs> Or racist and not racist in the point that I'm about to bring up here. Um, more recently, there is this whole awakening, you know, with George Floyd being, um, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say he was murdered. Um, I would never say that. I believe that it was a matter of time before he just died. I think if you gave him about five minutes more, he would have just died on his own. But uh, I, I'll, I'll say it's, I'll say it, at most it was negligence. All right. The whole Black Lives Matter thing, and I talked about this in the last episode, or maybe the episode beforehand. But this whole black this, black that, black owned, black excellence, black this, I mean, it's just corny. I mean, look, like the, even the people in the music industry, like they don't believe that. They don't believe like black this, black that, black this, black people are oppressed, but yet. Uh, most of the music industry in the United States is black and the most celebrated artists are black and the hip hop is mostly black and, you know, Offset and Cardi B are getting all my McDonald's deals. You faff, you faffa, my bad. Um, the, the same people who are the most rich in this country and the most celebrated by, by white people because, again, 70% of this country is white. I don't know how many times I have to say that. I mean, if you go around, there's majority white pretty much everywhere except for if you go to the hood where you, I mean you'll probably turn white from uh you know from a, the, the loss of blood from a, a gunshot wound <laughs> but uh they're the most rich people and the white people are giving them money white people are listening to their stuff if you go to a concert it's mostly white the the white people love them white people love black people <laughs> and in fact i would think they love them more than black people love black people that's just a fact. Statistically, all right? And it's based on streams. Come on, like 70%. If, if Granted, if 70% of the country is white, then uh, then no matter what, the majority is going to be white. And if they really did, if white people as a whole, as a consensus, did not like black people, they would never listen to that. They would never listen, and they would never listen to um, R&B, to Lil Baby, Bad Bunny. They would never do that. The most idolized and rich people are black. <laughs> um, 
if if this country did not like black people, which by the way, if you if anyone ever has to, if everyone ever has to say that this country's racist, just tell them to give an example. Um, there is actually there is there is one example where you can say that this country is racist and it's actually s systemic, but uh, they're probably not going to give you that answer. But if you were to tell them, if you were to ask them, of course, give me an example of how this country is systemically racist. They can never bring it up. They just say, oh, because of the past. I was like, okay, so you can't tell me like you're just. You just saying something you don't believe. All right. It seems to be the common occurrence around here. But this country, and especially corporations, which, granted, is, are mostly white. The most, the richest people, uh, like the the corporations, the biggest corporations are ran by white people because, again, they're most of the the country. Let's look at uh, McDonald's, right? McDonald's has deals with. Travis Scott, which uh, I got the Travis Scott fours on. If you uh, could see them, them joints clean. Oh, probably one of my favorite shoes of all time. Just too bad. I mean, I'm not gonna. I have them on right now. Travis Scott had his Travis Scott meal, the Cactus Jack joint. Um, Cardi B had his her own joint. Offset and Cardi B have their joint. Um, Megan The Stallion had a Popeyes deal. Um, Saweetie had her Saweetie meal. Sway Lee had his own, um, Carl's Jr., I don't, I don't even know. It, they're, they're getting payout. <laughs> they're getting money for being black. I mean, I mean, not overtly, but that's pretty much a consensus because, again, if you're not giving them money, then you're racist, okay? That's how, that's how it works. Like, it, it's, so, it's so easy to make money by claiming you're a victim, um... If I were to tell you that if you didn't support me, then you're a damn racist. If then you're that instead of you giving me money by you not supporting me and listening to my music and giving me money, you are by proxy calling me a spick. <laughs> Is that doesn't make any sense? But I I could say that I could say that because of my look at my skin, look at my skin, boy. Look at my damn skin. I could easily, it, I could easily be a grifter. It would be so much easier for me to say that you are calling me a spig bean or wetback than it would be to not to for me not to claim victimhood and try to do this on my own. And instead of me saying support me because otherwise you're a racist towards me, just saying hey support me because you like me, and because you want to change the landscape, you you can help me change the landscape. You could be part of a movement. It would be so much easier for me to do that. And that's why a lot of, <laughs> um, that's why the way that's where Black Lives Matter comes kind of comes into play. But um, let's see if I have any other points here. Like, I think that's pretty much um, the kind of the whole point. It's just that it's so much easier to make it's so much easier to make a blood pact with the devil for monetary gain than it is to do something on your own. It's because people don't want to put in the work to do whatever it is that they do. And as much as I love some of the biggest artists, like I, I love my dog CB, he, he inspires me to, even to this day, as much as I understand that I probably will never get the chance to work with him because of the, the plat not the plateau, but the platform that he has. And on his Instagram story, he's getting more and more um, conservative as I, I've, I've noticed. But I understand that at no point I probably won't be able to work with him. And even if I could, then I don't know if I... I mean, I could be a cool guy, but I, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that he says was a, it's a little not, a little too promiscuous. Um, I, I probably realize I probably never work with him. I, like, I, I love that guy though. He's, he's an inspiration to me. He got, he's what got me into wanting to sing, to write songs, um, to perform, to dance. Like I like to say. That I could dance, you know, it's kind of hard because I don't want to mess up the mic. I probably did a little bit, but, uh, I understand that there's some things that you got to sacrifice and it'd be so much easier for me to just go along and make, um, just make, um, degenerate music just to say that I'm, you know, I'm pumping and dumping, I'm, I'm, I'm popping and slumping, uh, run up on me, get right. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, that is the, that is what I say. I mean, I believe in self protection. So if you're, uh, 
And like, if you run up on me in a certain way, then I mean, it's easy to pop, 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 pop. That's it. <laughs> uh, it's it's like how many how many examples do I have to give? Like I, I'm the music industry. As much as I love doing music, as much as I love singing, and as much as I love writing, I understand that there's good, that, that I can't be where I want to be. And I pray every single night in Jesus' name that He gives me the guidance to get to where I want to be. And I'm aiming high because if you don't aim high, then you'll always get you'll always settle for less. So everyone, if you can, please support me. Um, I'm not. I I really I you know I just I'm not necessarily begging, but I'm I'm hopefully I'm pleading my case that you should support me. Um, listen to my song Speechless. Listen to my my EP Emergence. Um, I don't want my art to suffer. That's a lot of things that people always um, forget when it comes to Christian um, morality is that the art kind of suffers, like the quality of the art suffers for the message. And Andrew Clavin pointed this out. So I'm kind of not spewing the same thing, but I'm taking the idea and kind of spewing it. <laughs> um, I'm borrowing, <laughs> in other words. And I, I'm, I definitely will make some songs that are telling you that, you know, that oh, not, not that telling you that you should believe in God, but that God has done good things for me. And that God is, has done good things in general, and God is good. But uh, I, I talk about the principles of morality. So even in Emergence, I know I have some songs where I'm talking real crazy, and specifically on the side, you know, they coming over to run train, you know, but it's, it, it's more talking about the principle of why I'm not wasting my time with somebody who's going to be acting real crazy. But um, I like to talk more like the principles and then have more modern take with the people my age who are, again, who are pretty atheists and, and uh, they don't know any better, but I think it's because of where they grew up and it's by design. So please listen to Speechless. It's in the description. It's on all streaming spot. It's on all streaming platforms. Listen to Speechless, listen to Emergence, EP, and um, listen to the show. Make sure you share it. Um, make sure you like it. Make sure you subscribe. And I, I really... I really do need the support because I this wouldn't be this isn't possible without anybody. And I'm wanting to do this one hundred percent full time, focus on this, the podcast, so I can talk about some more music era stuff and now that I and then I'll get the free time to get more um informed about the music industry and then also work on music myself so that way I can do what I love to do and I feel every single day that that is what God put me on the earth to do. And that I am not afraid to put myself out there like like this. You know, I've done a lot of dumb things, but I've always put myself out there. And um, I'm not afraid to take the bullets, the metaphorical bullets. Uh, I'm not afraid to be the face of, um, the brown face of white supremacy or whatever it is that people want to call me. So please support me. And this has been Zared's Record. And I thank you for your time. And I thank you for your support. Instagram.com forward slash Zared Records. A-C-R-O-D-R-E-C-O-R-D-S. Zared Records on Instagram and on Twitter. On True Social, it is just Zared. X-R-O-D. Um, so thank you for everybody for um, listening to this. And... I pray for you. God loves you. Oh, wait. I didn't talk about the reason why. Okay. The reason why I wore this, by the way. Hold on. Before we go out. I'm sorry. I realized I forgot to talk about this. Yeah, the reason why I wore all this dripped out stuff is to show you that. I talked about it a little bit. Um, it's it just to show you that um, this is the stuff that I bought before I came to, before I came to Christ. And um, it's very fitting that, I, that I'm wearing this for the music industry episode because symbolism is important. And um, just showing you exactly that, uh, what it means. Like, this is whole different. I would, you know, I paid for this already, so I don't know if I'd wear it. Um, 
I don't know what I'd do with it. But, um, because I'm, I'm not a money washer. But anyway, sorry. That's all. That, that was the reason why I wore what I wore. Anyway, thank you, sorry. Now I'm not as actually gonna, now I'm actually gonna close out here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for listening. This is Zerd. And this has been Zerd. Zerd's record.